and welcome to my podcast. This is Anne of Fiber, Floss, and Fiction, and today is October 24th, 2022. So welcome back if you are a returning viewer. I always appreciate you coming to spend some time with me, and if you are a new viewer, welcome. I'm glad that you found me, and I hope that you have a reason to click the subscribe button or at least come back and visit me at some other point in time after this video. Um, quick basic update. Uh, this is round two of this entire podcast. I filmed last week, uh, Friday, and there was no voice whatsoever on any of my recorded segments. So try and again. Let's hope this time is the charm. Um, we have had a kind of noticeable weather change here. It was in the 60s this weekend. Uh, when I took my walk on Sunday morning um, with the dog, no coat, just had on like a quarter zip fleece and it was perfectly comfortable. And today it is blustery and cold. There is snow across the way on the Sangre Mountains and we even have had a little bit of flurries. But I am extra excited to say that uh, we had our wood stove cleaned this morning, so we are having a fire tonight, and I cannot wait. It's supposed to be um, below freezing every night this week for the next, I think, seven days. And so this is like one of my favorite times of the year to have a crafting project and sit in front of the fire and enjoy all of that. So I uh, hope that the weather is good where you are. Again, I know there's some folks in um, Australia who have been kind of waiting and watching some floodwaters. So hopefully you are safe and that that natural issue will resolve itself relatively soonly. Um, no, no fun kind of sitting and waiting for the river to rise or the fire to come. So I know of what you speak. Anyway, thinking about you if you are in that area. So um, I think that's it for kind of general stuff. And I do have a fair number of things piled here and here and over there to talk about. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on talking about knitting and spinning. I have several FOs to share with you all today on my knitting. Uh, I have quite a, f well, quite a few, two, <laughs> whatever that is, <laughs> quite a few. Let's just talk about these hats <laughs> that I finished. Uh, both of these hats are slated to go into a shelter donation box for uh, this season. Uh, my mom's church always does a, not holiday box, but like winter box um, or winter gift boxes for a shelter that they've kind of adopted in the Baltimore area. And so these are gonna go there. Um, last year I sent a whole bunch of stuff and my mom had commented that they really could use more guy stuff. Uh, they tend to have more men than women at this particular shelter. And so like guy appropriate things would be welcomed. So the first of those is a hipster hat. This is the largest size. Um, it's a pattern from Tin Can Knits, so they tend to do babies all the way up through adults. This is the largest size available. Um, it is a little bit slouchy on my husband, so I figured definitely guy worthy. Um, the pattern is actually knit with this side out, with the um, regular stockinette side out. And when you finish, then you turn it inside out and then it gets this really cool cross pinwheel effect on the top from the decreases that are worked on the opposite side. So a very versatile hat. I think it would work great in, well, pretty much any yarn you would think to knit it in. I knit mine in a half skein of Bare Naked Wool's Kent DK, which is a Romney and merino blend. I think it's a 70-30 blend. And this is the colorway Beach Glass, which is kind of a natural taupey gray with some little heathering flecks, but I thought would be a great neutral for a guy and pretty straightforward to go with anything. So, so that is hat number one. Again, that is the hipster hat. And I will include 
links to the Ravelry pages or any other information about like, yarn companies in the uh, description box down below. The second hat is a free pattern. I can't remember if the hipster is free or not. I think it, I think it might be, but this one for sure is. This is the Jelka hat, and it is a pattern from Isabel Kramer, and it is knit. It is written for a worsted weight yarn, and I have chosen um, Brooklyn Tweed's Shelter. And it has a great, it's not showing up super well. Let's try that. You can see a little bit better. Um, it has a slip stitch color work pattern there at the brim of the hat. And the colors I've used are cast iron, which is the dark, almost black gray. And then this brighter red, which is kind of a dark cranberry red, is called Long John's. You don't need very much of the contrast color, so you could easily do this from a scrap. I think maybe I used 10 yards on this, but even so, if you just had like limited amounts, you could do uh, each round of the slip stitch pattern you could do in a separate color, I think. It wouldn't have to be all in the same. And you could do the background of this stripe in a different color too than the crown. Um, another kind of great basic hat, uh, suitable for a guy. This one fits more like a beanie on my husband. Um, so yeah, my light's not great today. I did not plan on um, recording today and we have, as I mentioned, it's kind of gray and dreary outside, but wanted to get this done because it's already been two weeks. Okay, hats. Next up, uh, I finished the October Moon Socks that I was working on. This is a free pattern uh, by, I think it's, I think she pronounces her name Lena, Lena Knits, L-I-N-A, Knits. And it is written with three sizes. I knit the middle size and I replaced the written short row heel with a fish lips, fish lips kiss heel, which I like better. The yarns are, uh, main color is the color Flock, and it is in the, uh, I've just lost the name of it, Denali, that's it, Denali sock from Explorer Knits. And the heels and color work patterns are some leftover Miss Babs yarn in the Yummy Base colorway Blackbird, which is a super true jet black. Um, I did make a little modification to these. So the pattern for the color work here needs 68 stitches for the middle size. And so I knew that that would be a little bit big for the feet for what I consider a women's size medium. So I just decreased after I finished the color work and I worked a few rounds. I just decreased two stitches on either side to get the foot and this bottom part of the leg down to a 66 stitch circumference and then just worked the rest of it as written. Really like how these turn out. I think they are super fun and these will be gifted to a friend who has a birthday in October and who loves Halloweeny things. So yes, really enjoyed making those. Um, I don't need to take those off. Let me set those aside. And then my final finished object for today is my rosewood shawl. This is a single skein shawl. The pattern is by Janina Calio, who is Woolenberry. And the yarn is an absolutely beautiful alpaca, silk, and cashmere blend. It's 70% alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere, I think. Hang on, I have the tag, I'll just look. Yes, that is correct. And it is from my friend Jocelyn at Serendipidi Dye Works. Serendipidi Dye Works. And this is the base name. I think it's Philo Philolius. Philolius? Anyway, 
that is the base and that is her shop information. The colorway is called Little Diva, which is a really dark rose, purpley pink fuchsia color and I love it. Um, this blocked out so great. You can see it's got beautiful drape, the ends curl really nicely. Um, interesting thing about this pattern is that it is written exclusively in garter stitch so there is no uh, there are no pearl rows on it even in this lacy section down here. The pattern is written where you would uh, use one skein about 400 yards and it has for the lace section it has you work one full lace section and then like three quarters of the lace section and I got two full repeats plus about two-thirds of the last pattern repeat out of the single 437 yard skein. It is beautiful. I love how it turned out. The lace looks kind of complicated, but it's actually really simple. It's just easy to work. It's knit two together and yarn overs. That's it. And then you, you kind of switch up the cadence of it and that's what creates this lace pattern. So blocked out beautifully. You certainly, it's big enough that you could wear it you know, as like a regular shawl around the back, but you could also wear it as a wrapped shawl like that, you know, kind of like a, a cowl in the front. And I think either way would, would be beautiful. So really pleased with how that came out and that will be headed off to Jocelyn to be included in her booth for upcoming shows. So... Okay, then before I talk about works in progress, let me just share a really quick hand spun. This is a mini skein. If you watched my last video, you know I spun up this big skein of um, Hilltop Cloud Fibers. It's a wool and silk blend and it is a gradient. So there's actually nine colors and these this big skein is the first three. And what I realized when I skeined this up is I am going to have a hard time because the subtle, the changing color is so subtle, I'm going to have a hard time figuring out which is the darkest end to start with. So I decided that I would spin the next color in the pack as just a mini skein. There's just 100 yards in this one, but it is the next color gradation kind of hard to see it's a little washed out but this is slightly purpler and lighter than the colors in this one and you can see it's got beautiful little tweety bits of silk so I am I've got these two done and I'm working on the next lightest colors so again I'm going to do that as a mini skein and work my way through the remaining five colors that I have so hand spun for today Okay, so works in progress. I only have two because I am focusing really hard on finishing up my Aloft shawl. And I made some good progress on it this weekend. It is now at the stage where it looks like almost nothing discernible on the needles except a big gray blob. Here it is. Um, this is a top-down shawl, so I'm knitting it in this direction. Started here at the center back. The original pattern was in 52 weeks of shawls, and the designer is Becca Knits. And it is now available as a standalone pattern, so you could download a PDF copy of it or, you know, a single version copy of it if you wanted I have knit through four of the main body repeats and I decided not to do the fifth, but I am started on the 40 rows of the border. So I'm, I'm I think 10 rows into that. So I have about 30 rows left, maybe a few more, maybe like 32. Anyway, knitting this in a alpaca wool and silk blend from Molly Wonka Fibers. This was a custom uh, yarn that I had dyed or not dyed but spun for a lace club. The base is called Celestial and this color is Milky Way which is a nice neutral gray 
really soft and fuzzy, which you can kind of see from the, the skein as well as the pattern. I am focusing on working on this. I would love to get this done. I should have it done by the next time I talk to you all, but I'd love to have it done by the end of the month. I'm not totally sure I'm going to get there, but we'll try. And then finally, I have started another pair of self-striping socks. Ooh, the dog is sneezing. I don't know if y'all could hear that, but anyway. Um, just to have something that's a little bit more portable than that big shawl that I'm mostly tied to the chart for. Um, yarn is Desert Vista Dye Works. It is her Viso sock base in the colorway Big Damn Heroes, which is a Firefly uh, reference. And it is a skein of brown and taupe and gold. There's kind of two different browns in there. There's a slightly lighter and then a much darker kind of chocolate colored brown. And I uh, just have started the cuff and the leg. So that is as far as I've gotten. Knitting these also up for a friend as a gift and no specific timeline on those. I'm just trying to work on them when I have a quiet moment or waiting for something, standing in line, that kind of thing. So that is all I have on the needles right now. Uh, I'm looking ahead at making some November plans. So I've got some yarns pulled and we'll talk about that next time, kind of as I get started on stuff that I'm working through for my uh, race to the bottom stash project. So uh, that will be up next time I talk and let's go ahead and move on to books. Next up are books. So I have four to talk to you about today, two that I finished and two in progress. Um, first up is City of Glass. This is the next book. It's book three in the Shadow Hunters series by Cassie Clare that I'm buddy reading with a friend. Um, this continues the story of Clary and Jace. Uh, as well as the evil plot that um, Clary's father, Valentine, has concocted to try to take over the mortal instruments and rule the world with demons. So if you are a fan of, of the series, you kind of know the storyline. If you're not, this is kind of in the middle of things. There's books one and two where we're introduced to characters and the Shadowhunters world. This is more adventures. Um, if you like young adult fantasy that has um, lots of adventure, really spunky heroine, good good character development, um, I highly recommend these books. This is my second time reading them. Super fun reread. Um, not too much to say about the plot because it won't make a ton of sense if you haven't read books one and two. Uh, but I will just mention this edition that I'm reading, which is from the box set from Lit, Lit Joy Crate. They're hardback books and they include some really lovely artwork. There's art inside. And then these are also author annotated editions. So there's notes within them. I'm trying to find one here um, where the author has added in some handwritten information about the text that she's written, which are kind of like fun little anecdotes about maybe what she based a given scene on in terms of like the landscape, um, things that are stuff her friends have said to her that got incorporated in the book, characters who bear a resemblance to someone she knows in real life. So I really enjoyed rereading these with all of those little kind of insider story notes included. Um, so I'm not sure if they still have this series available, but I will leave a link to the web website below in case you are interested. And I will link all of these books on the story graph, which is the online platform that I use to track my books currently. Um, so that was City of Glass.
The second uh, book is one that is an audiobook that I just finished up called The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. And this book was recommended to me by an online friend who's another bookish uh, kind of fantasy uh, historical fiction. She likes a lot of the genres I like. So thank you for this recommendation because I really enjoyed it. It is set in the 1880s, late 1880s in London. The main character is Mary Jekyll, and she is the daughter of Dr. Jekyll, of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde fame. And um, her father has died. Her mother has recently passed away after having gone mad. And Mary is left to kind of sift through the estate papers, and she comes across a listing that's written in her mother's hand that just says Hyde, and then it indicates that there's upkeep being paid for um, Hyde, whoever Hyde is, at the Society of the Mary Magdalens. So she sets out to try to find out who this person is, and along the way she has tons of adventures. She winds up um, enlisting the help of Sherlock Holmes, and she meets Dr. Watson, and they wind up enlisting her help because they understand now that the things she's looking for and the cases they're trying to solve involving the Jack the Ripper murders are somehow inter intertwined, interlocked with this society of alchemists. And the book is just, it's a super fun adventure. It's, sorry about that, I'm not sure what got turned off, but anyway, um, a super fun adventure that ties in all kinds of details about life uh, in London in the late 19th century and as well brings to life literary figures from the 19th century. Um, Nathaniel Hawthorne short story, H.G. Wells, um, Mary Shelley, so characters from those books appear in this one as if they were real life people. And of course, there's this whole mystery that Mary's trying to solve and super interesting characters in it. And I just, I loved it. I thought it was a super fun book and would highly recommend it if you enjoy historical mysteries or if you love kind of nods to classic literature uh, brought to life, this is a good one for you. So um, it's the first in a series of books, but manages not to tick me off at the end by leaving the ending of the story like completely hanging. So two thumbs up for that. That got bonus points for me because that is a pet peeve. Okay, uh, the two books that I'm reading right now, the first I'll just mention really Briefly, it's the next audiobook I'm listening to called Before the Coffee Gets Cold. It's uh, one that was recommended to me by a friend. It has a time travel uh, facet to it, but I'm not very far, like I'm not even through the first full chapter, so I'll weigh in more on that once we get a little closer to the, to the end of it. Um, and then I'm also reading The House on Vesper Street, which I'm about halfway done. I don't think I brought it down. I did not bring it down, but again, links to all the Storygraph books will be down below. Uh, this is another one set in late Victorian London. Um, it is also a historic mystery. It involves a secret society. I guess there's a theme right now. I must kind of be in the mood for sort of creepy, macabre, sort of gothic type novels. Um, in this one, there have been a series of missing young women, and the police are trying to solve that. The main inspector is absolutely hilarious. He's big and blustery and very smart, but says what he thinks. He's enlisted the help of this young man who's come to London to try to find his uncle, and he, his uncle is a clergyman and the young man uh, is also studying to be a clergyman. And his uncle has quit writing letters. So he's come to the city to try to find his uncle, but at the same time he gets wrapped up into this mystery. So there's a mysterious Lord who has something to do with this. 
again, this sort of secret society that nobody knows anything about. And um, it paints that great portrait of all the different classes in London at the time and kind of what's hap happening on the, the eve of the 20th century. So, uh, so far, great fun and one I'm enjoying quite a bit. Uh, we'll have that to report on in more depth next time I talk to you guys because I should have it finished by then. I also wanted to mention that upcoming in just a, 10 days when we turn over to November is the nonfiction November event hosted by a book olive. Um, I will link to her YouTube channel as well as um, her Instagram account, and she has a separate account for Nonfiction November. It's Instagram at Nonfiction November. And the goal is just to try to read more no, nonfiction in the month than you normally do. So if you never read nonfiction, pick up a nonfiction book. And she has some great suggestions in her most recent uh, YouTube video, just things that she would suggest are good books to read. She is a book reviewer for several different publications, so she has kind of a wide breadth of things. If you think nonfiction maybe is too dry or boring, she has some great titles to suggest that you might enjoy. Um, so coming up, there will be a lot of nonfiction. I'm still going to continue my Cassie Clare buddy read of the Shadowhunter world um, with my friend, but the other books that I have on tap uh, our nonfiction that I would like to try to get to in the month of November. Okay, let's go on and we'll talk about cross stitch. Last but not least, let's talk about what I've been stitching on. Uh, so first off, thanks to everybody who voted on my last video to pick and choose what was your favorite uh, of my full coverage pieces that would help me choose what I was going to work on next year going forward in 2023. Uh, it was very close. Uh, Winter's Encounter and Which Way were within just one vote of each other. So if you voted for Winter's Encounter, know that you pushed it over the top. So thank you very much for um, letting me know your opinions on that. We did have a few folks who uh, looked at having me work on some of my bigger pieces as a priority, but Winter's Encounter is the winner. So that will be my focus piece in 2023. And not to worry, the other pieces will be out for other rotations throughout the year. I will shuffle through them in some fashion. I haven't yet quite decided how I'm gonna do that, but you'll see Winter's Encounter out every month. And that'll be a fun one to work on. I think I have a chance of getting it finished and I may even work on that a little bit the end of this year, if I get Desert Mandala finished, which is looking very likely. So anyway, thank you all for voting. Um, I appreciate I appreciate your input and uh, hopefully you will not be too disappointed to see that lovely horse themed picture out. Desert Mandala, let's, let me show you where I am on that because I am definitely getting closer. So I have finished this nature corner. It is totally complete. That has the Roadrunner and the Scrub Jay and the two different cacti. Um, lots of interesting specialty stitches to work on the cactus with the long stitches and then Jessica stitches up here. And then uh, I have actually started the final section, which is this landscape. And that is Arches National Monument here in the US. So that is my last bit of quote regular stitching. I took a look at it uh, once I got started on it. There's really no specialty stitches in here. The only thing that's, I, don't, I wouldn't even say funky, but not just plain cross stitch with DMC or the silk threads. There's some metallic in here in the black. I don't think, don't think it probably shows up. Maybe a little bit of sparkle, but. Um, so this should be relatively straightforward because it's just cross stitching. That's all there is, is to it. There is a fair amount of color changes as you would expect. 
in this, but I've got some threads sticking out over here. Anyway, um, just plain stitches. So I think that is realistic, realistic to say I will be finished this section by the next time I talk to you all. And then the final bit will be adding in the bigger crystals that are left here in this center medallion. And then I have, you can see right here, these are, uh, um, they're not bicorns, I don't think, but these bigger crystals that you can kind of see sparkling right there. I have those to fill in. I need to do these too, but I have these to fill in on the landscapes that go up this way and the ones that are across the top. So those bigger ones I have not yet put in, although I have been doing the smaller beads, like in this section and here, um, as I've been going on. So I did have somebody ask me if, like, if I had plans for this. And yes, I definitely plan to get it framed. I kind of have an idea in mind about what I want to do, but I wanted to see, I'm going to take it to a framing shop because I just feel like as epic as that piece is, it kind of deserves to have a real, real frame and professionally done. Um, so my plan is to take that up to our local frame shop once it's finished. I don't know if I'll also do matting on it. It's pretty big, but I do have a, an idea in mind for how I would like to have it framed. And I do have a spot on the wall upstairs that I can kind of look at every time I come up the stairs to enjoy it because it has been a while in process. Um, yeah, so it'll be kind of bittersweet. I'm looking forward to having it finished, but at the same time, I'm going to miss working on it because it's just so much fun. All of the colors, all of the different types of stitches that are included in it, the beads, the metallics. Yeah, it's, it's been a ton of fun. Um, but I am glad that I'm kind of getting to the end of the process and looking forward to having it ready to go on my wall. So that's going to do it for me today. Hopefully this is not super, super long. Um, I think I covered everything, although, you know, when you film twice, sometimes you forget things in between, but that should, that should do us for uh, this last recording for October. I will plan to see you all again in November. November is going to be a fairly busy month for me, but I am going to try to stick with two podcasts in the month, and we'll see how that that all shakes out. I hope that you have had an opportunity to do some crafting, some reading, some things just for you. And uh, I hope that the weather is just the way you like it wherever you are in the world. So thank you all for watching and I will talk to you again next time. Take care everybody. Bye.